Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for your patience and a warm welcome to everybody. This is the pre press conference for Canada and Jamaica at the beginning of the in Toronto. We're joined by three members of the staff of the senior national team. My immediate right, we have our analyst and coach, also Maren Gordon and the head coach. Halverson. Before we open the more questions, we will start with Coach Halverson, who will give a brief about how training today and arriving here in town with the rest of the boys. Yeah, yeah we reached here uh, late last night. It was a long, long journey from Big Bay. We start, started the journey in Jamaica. It was, it was a, about 14 hours for us to get to our hotel yesterday. So um, considering that, and it was a mistake, it was two, considering that the training is more was quite clean. Um, everybody learned the, the, and, and took part in the training uh, with good tempo. Uh, I felt there was a good atmosphere within the, the squad. So yeah, we were kind of pleasantly surprised with, uh, with the attitude of players and, and how fresh they were after a, a long journey. So, so it went well. Okay, I will we use this opportunity now to open the four questions. Please raise your hand and you may have your question to our technical assistant and coaches, Wall and Gordon, our head coach, help us. So you may open and raise your hand. All right, let's start with Brian Crown. Good afternoon, to you, sir. Good afternoon, coach. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, coach, how's how's the family back home or your friends back home? I see that there there there's a bit of a, a troubling time back there. How's everything back home? Yeah, the situation is is uh, I think managed to work. There's uh, there's no lives in danger, so they have actually one village. They have a lot of lot of friends there, but they are back in their house in Bethany, so hopefully it will be no harm to to be. All right, all right, that's good to. Go ahead. Yeah, that's good to hear. That's good to hear, and uh, we're, our prayers are with you and your family and your friends back home. Um, now to the football. Um, the, the conditions play a, a significant role, especially when it comes down to the Canadian national team, and they use that to their advantage. Um, how much do you factor conditions in to your tactics when going up against opponents like these? Because a lot of your players, um, we know how CONCACAF is going from the, the humidity of Azteca to the, the, the freezing temperatures of, of Canada. Um, do you consider this when when drafting game plan together, coach? Yeah, we try to prepare for both, uh, but we don't pick players from the conditions. It's it's uh, the quality of the player in itself, and it's the character of the player in itself. If you've got good character, you can play in whatever weather. But of course, we 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 plan for this. Uh, if if you saw a game in. In Kingston, uh, it was a very slow tempo game because of the heat and humidity, uh, and because we we needed to stay a long time uh, the day before in the dressing room, like four hours in in the the stadium, waiting, waiting, waiting for decision to consider or play it. So uh, preparation and kick off early in the morning, in, in the morning heat was kind of bound to be a slow tempo match. Uh, we know that this game it's up zero degrees here in Canada uh, and we know the game will be a high tempo so we prepare for that uh, and we are preparing the play for that to be a, a, a high tempo match and uh, yeah like I said uh, in the introduction uh, we were quite surprised and happy how fresh and uh, the, the players were this morning so I think I think we, we are in a, we have a good moment. Thank you very much, Mando. We really appreciate it. Let's go to living sauce from the Glino. Go ahead. Yes, coach. Afternoon. Um, just wondering, coach. Um, in terms of prayer, Mikel will be out. Um, 
I, I, I'm assuming at least same thing for the Mario. Um, in attack concern about um, uh, we also know Leon has been under some pressure from the local public. Um, in concern about um, the 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 attack I'm um, going into tomorrow's game. Um, no, I'm not concerned. Um, no, we always expect of players to get the best. You know, sometimes I don't think any player wants to have Sometimes you know, in the pressure of what to be good sometimes, you know, not bad. But um, yes, we can go out. Um, I heard about the name and what that you're talking about. But it is off to you. And, um, you know, the Mariah who, who came in. And we also have young back who came in. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're quite comfortable with the squad when tomorrow's game. Can I get an idea of how you, you plan to organize um, going, go, going forward um, offensively? Yeah, of course we have our have our plans. So we are gonna attack them. Um, and we did on occasion well. Uh, we found good spaces against. Them. I think that at least the really good goal scoring chances in in Kingston, uh, apart from goal score. And in this games a play of games on such a high caliber and quality, you cannot expect to have ten goal scoring chances. So we have to. We have to be a little bit more clinical finishing our, our goal scoring. As we need to go, know that we need to go. So we need, we need to be brave, but we also need to be smart when going forward. And consider all our dynamics, coach. Um, you definitely think it, it is in our our capacity to turn this around and get the, the result that we, we, we really want. No doubt in mind. No doubt at all in mind. Thank you very much, Livingston. They appreciate it. Let's now go on to Tyrone Lewis. You may mute. Are you there? We're going to have to move forward to you. Can you hear me? Go ahead, Tyrone. Yes, I was just saying good afternoon, Coach. Good afternoon, Eric. Sorry, Tiga, but you're always very distorted at this point in time. So we're going to ask you to cover that so that we can be able to accommodate somebody else. And so, wait your hand up. You may proceed with your question. Hi. Uh, good day, Coach. Coaches, Wade Brown from IRFM. Um, Coach Charles Grimson, um, having created a number of chances in the first half especially, it would have been you know a punch to go to concede so late. Um, how pleased were, were you to see that we're creating chances and... um. How confident are you of getting the desired result uh, tomorrow? No, yes, I'm, I, I'm really confident that the, the, the guys look sharp. We know we can we do better than we did last game, but considering everything, it was always going to be a strange game. Keep the reality of it, like I said before. Um, really pleased uh, that we created a lot of chances. Well, not a lot of chances, you, you cannot really expect that, but. And then uh, losing Mick so early in the first half, uh, it also a blow to our approach to the game. We to grow it. So we needed to adapt uh, and kind of improvise early in the game. So, yeah, I think they did quite well considering everything, especially defending Ghana. They, we didn't give them a lot of scoring chances. And really, to keep on doing that here uh, tomorrow in Ghana. Can you pop with it? No, that's it. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We have time to accommodate more questions. If those individuals have like their hands, we appreciate that we're able to get quite a bit from Main Street. So, last time, you can go ahead with, with one question and we'll all have Mr. Bruce at All right. Um... Norando again, as Simon alluded. Uh, Meran, you mentioned young Deshane Beckford, and we, we've seen him in the USL. Different dynamic. Um, we know that Demar Gray has joined up with the team. Can you talk us a bit more about what Deshane Beckford offers, um, different from what we have in the squad now, or what we saw against the, the Canadian team in the first leg? Um, first of all, I think, you know, he came in in the squad in um, Guatemala. Um, 
you know, thing, you know, coaching staff, you know, like we stuff. And we just um, choose to include him in the squad. Um, the different dynamic the team is very quick, very nippy. And if you get a chance, he will do well. But um, for now, we will talk about general things about the team. And give it a much people stuff about our team because we want to get a positive result tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Blake. And uh, we all have Coach Wall with us here as well. If anyone would like a question as well, if you can unmute or see. Good afternoon, um, Coach, um, and coaching staff, and the host. Um, I have a question, Coach. They may have been asked before. I, I just joined, so forgive me. Um, if it has been asked before, the loss of Mikhail Antonio, um, how is how will that be compensated for, or is it a devastating blow as we look for a two a two nil victory to put us in play for qualification? That's the first question, and I'll based on that, I may have a follow up. That's it. And then we answer it. So we will talk about of, uh, is it the blow to lose? Well, Mick is always an over figure in our team, but uh, within the squad that we have, we have alternative ways of dealing with that. And we not have to think, I'll see it in our pants and come up with something. Uh, I'm just always more adapt to that. And the fact that we got pluses on other stuff, so it means a different type of dynamic um, than having Mick on the pitch, which I think we can adapt to. I think all teams would miss Mick and Antonio, I think, without a doubt. But it gives us also uh, an advantage that they will not know what is coming. We will use a different kind of player, or we will use a similar kind of player. So I think it, it can give us an advantage. Every team, every, every national team would miss a player like we can have on your pull on. And, and with that being said, just a quick follow up, coach. The, the replacement option that you went with to have both Shamar Nicholson and um, Travante up front. Um, okay. Were you happy with the, the results that yielded and is that a possible solution? And at the back, are you seeking to tidy up on the in the, some of the individual mis mistakes or missteps that we saw in the center of the back line? I think I would start with the defensive. Uh, actually, I would uh, uh, disagree with you. I think we did well uh, at the back. And in color, uh, in this heat, you you lose at some point focus, and and uh, we did that maybe four or five times in the game, and it was a different person, uh, but not unexpected that that sometimes you would open a game, especially when it draws to the end of it. Uh, but we've talked about those things that we want to direct at the back, and it's not about person, but it's just shaping up some tactical things. Um, what well, was well, the beginning? Trivandrum and Shamakos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we were talking this morning about what, and after the game, we were talking about our changes. Uh, at this stage, early on in the first half, uh, we weren't quite good uh, at the time Mick went off. So we opted to go for a like like player at the same time to continue. Uh, and at the same time, we were winning the first 20 minutes. Is it the correct, uh, like when a coach takes a, a decision to make a change early in the game, and that was our thought, let's go like back. And Trivon is a really, yeah, he, he's a really good, powerful striker who can uh, who can run in behind, etc. But again, uh, he doesn't, hasn't played many games at this level. So, yeah, it was a chance to... And then later on in the game, we engaged against some, some tactical game and, and, and took him off and tried to spin us. Thank you, Rush, Mr. Lake. I think we can have a final question. Um, do, just want to ask the coach, um, basically, oh, 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 
how he views the Canada Canada team at this at this point in time and basically what what are your plans to see to try and overcome them for this second leg? Yeah, I'm gonna give that another question to John. Uh, this is your to to go in depth in in, uh, in Canada, and then we can get them. Uh, perspective on Canada, the optic double flanks, um, depending on what they have alternated in the recent games, more how they are structurally and actually their core and what they're not doing is not unexpected. And more about is it always about nullifying the opponent or is it find a way to play with it and work it against? It's almost that kind of thing we have about overall how we executed the game plan and we were in game one. We're overall pretty pleased. Um, but going into there are things to be connected with much more uh, and like take advantage of, you know even better way in this up game of course so for me I look forward to that and how we can make way not just the expect goal but actually win in terms of actual goal too. Yeah they, they would probably be pretty confident with it uh, with two win two one uh, advantage again there's going uh, to the home PB mobile had in celebration case so they don't lose a lot of games, so, so they are probably pretty confident. I would say just to to overcome them, it's no one not concede. They are a really good uh, transition team, probably one of the best here in Congo Cup in transition. So we have to work and to be open when when we lose possession of the pitch or We need to we need to deny them of space and their ability to, to go fast and attack a fast fast. And these creative players, we need to be aware not to, to lose our tools more than we was. And then, uh, I think we did that pretty well. Baron, anything supplements or coaches? Yeah. Um, I think all in all, you know, I think we had a very tactical game the last time. Uh, technical mistakes cost us a game. But I think the boys, you know, um, it was really, really pleasant in terms of what they want this one. And this one is very good. In um, team card was good. He's pretty good. The intensity of the trade was very good. They look focused. They look happy together. And I think we're just making a, a very powerful team in the near region. Thank you very much. Yeah, Carl, I was just, just going to ask you that in a Meran. Um, as, as I mentioned earlier, Leon has been facing some pressure in the public space. Um, how are your team coping now and looking forward to, to the game? There's a pressure on and everybody. Yeah. In high level in, 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 in the world at some point will face pressure. And um, we don't really do that in training and uh, we don't see that in meetings. Um, I understand that it might be five is so much about because that, that player really wants to go and do well for the country. Um, but it's, it's just, you know, sometimes, you know, it's just tough, you know, toughest level. But Leon is good. I, I really can't understand the, the, the criticism he is getting. He's one of the highest profile players in Jamaica. He's coming for every match and doing his job for his country. Um, he's probably one of our most creative players. Uh, and yeah, he's given everything he can, but he's in a lot of. I just don't understand the criticism he is. He needs to, to listen to when he is coming here every match, give everything he can. So support the, these players. Yeah, they are trying their best to support them, show them love and, and support them so we can do what we need to do with Jamaica. Thank you very much, Coach Hogginson, Coaches Gordon and Wall. And thank you very much for the media for tuning in. And those that are coming to us will save travels on the journey here. Kick the 7.30, both Jamaica time and also Toronto time as well. And we look forward to seeing more from you all as well. Have a pleasant rest of the afternoon. Take care.